It's January 2024. Happy New Year's, everybody. And you know what that means. It's time for your 2023 Fraser Valley Real Estate Market Recap. And what an interesting year it was. If you asked me at the beginning of the year, I probably wouldn't have expected things to happen and play out as they did. But honestly, that's kind of been the case for the last couple of years here. And it's really tough to predict what's going to happen. But I think that's just another reason why you shouldn't try and predict anything. And realistically, just play the long game. But I digress and let's get into today's video. What's going on guys? Alex Dunbar here, your favorite local realtor, back again with another video. If this is your first time on the channel, I make weekly videos pertaining to the BC and Canadian real estate market, as well as showcase community tours across the lower mainland. So if that is something you're interested in seeing more of this year, I suggest you consider subscribing to our channel. And so getting right into it, I think if you asked almost anybody, whether it was a realtor or a consumer, most people probably wouldn't have had that great of an outlook on how this year was gonna look. I I personally was a lot more bearish on where things were gonna go, but I think once again, this year has just shown how resilient our market is. And that's gonna become ever more apparent as we get into the numbers. So starting us off, we're just gonna be looking at an overview of the Fraser Valley market itself. In all of 2023, there was 29,610 new listings. And this is made up of all property types. And this was 8.7% lower than the previous year and 8% below the 10 year average. And the story that you hear over and over and over again in the market is that we have an inventory shortage. And with a lack of new listings, this is basically exactly what we're talking about. Now, there were a number of reasons for that, but I'm not gonna get into them right away. Now, when we break it down by property type, for detached homes, there was 10,831 listings. And this was 10.9% lower than 2022. As for townhomes, there was 5,836 listings and this was 23.5% lower than the previous year, which is substantially lower. As for condos, these were the closest with 8,097 new listings, only 2.9% lower than the previous year. As we move on to take a look at the sales in 2023, there was a total of 14,713 sales across all property types. This was 4% lower than 2022 and 23% lower than the 10 year average. So last year there was substantially less sales overall. And that's why a lot of the things you probably heard was that the market was a lot slower. However, wait till we get to prices because they might surprise you. Now breaking it down by individual property type for detached homes, we had an even 4,800 sales and that was 5.8% lower than the previous year. As for townhomes, we had 3,681, which was 3% lower than the previous year and condos at 4,654, which was 4.1% lower than the previous year. So while 2022 was a slower year for the most part, aside from the first two months, 2023 was much slower. And I think as this kind of demonstrates and we'll see later on in the video, detached homes definitely took the brunt of it. And townhomes really were the hottest property type pretty much for the entire year. Moving on, we're gonna take a look at the active listings. So the number of listings that were active as of January 1st. So overall, there was 3,996 active listings as we headed into this year. Now, this is no surprise as typically listings take a nosedive as we get towards the end of the year because of expired listings hitting on the 31st of December or close to that range, or people just pulling their properties off the market around the holidays. And then generally we're gonna see an increase in active listings as we head into the April, May, June time period. And that's typically where they're gonna be close to peaking out. And just under 4,000 active listings to end the year is actually a little bit higher than I thought we were gonna be. As I've said over and over and over again, we need to typically be closer to about 6,500 listings to have any downward pressure on prices or at least sustained downward pressure. So that overall number was actually 5.5% higher than the previous year. Now breaking it down by property type, for detached listings, there was 1,799 active listings to end the year, 12.6% higher than the previous year. As for townhomes, there was only 663 to end the year, which was 13.4% lower than last year. So as I said, townhomes have definitely been the hottest commodity and this goes to show it. And lastly, for condos, we had 1,116, which was 9.8% higher than the previous year. Moving on, we're gonna take a quick look at the sales to active listings ratio. And for the Fraser Valley, typically what we're looking at is anything under 12% is gonna be a buyer's market. Anything between 12 
12 and 20% is gonna be a balanced market and anything over 20% is going to be a seller's market. And what we saw was overall, it was at a 19.2% sales to active listings ratio, which is actually a balanced market, but just edging almost at a seller's market. And breaking it down by property type for detached homes, we had 15% sales to active listing ratio, which is a balanced market. For townhomes, we had 28.1%, which is a relatively strong seller's market. And then at condos, we had 24.8%, which was also a seller's market. And once again, this is just kind of showing that detached homes have been the slowest part of the market for the majority of the year. The reason being is that they're just so unaffordable for most people and most people that even if they're not first time buyers or they may be upsizers, it's pretty difficult to make the jump from let's say a seven, eight, nine hundred thousand dollar townhome into the average price detached homes, which are 1.5, 1.6, 1.7 million. So when it is a declining market, we see a compression. And then in an inclining market, we kind of see the different property types space out from one another. And I haven't quite got the prices yet, but what you'll see later on is that they didn't just go in one direction. So just keep that in mind. Moving on, we're gonna take a look at the average days on market. So the average time it took for properties to sell. And these were up there pretty high, at least in comparison to the last couple of years. It's definitely not anything substantial if we're looking at the history of the market, but detached homes, the average days on market was 40 days, townhomes was 32 days, and condos were 33 days. So when we compare this to the past couple of years, especially in times like 2020, 2021, and early 2022, it feels like a lot longer period of time because homes are selling in just a few days or the average time was somewhere from one to two weeks. But in reality, this is a much more normal market per se. Plus, what I did notice this year is that there was a lot of sellers who were more resistant to lowering their prices because they hadn't realigned their expectations with where the market was. So there was definitely a lot more properties sitting on the market for a lot longer period of time that were completely unreasonably priced. And this is just going to pull that average number up. And now onto the best part, everybody's favorite, we're going to take a look at the change in benchmark prices. So I've got a couple different numbers that I want to go over with you. So starting us off, we have detached homes, which finished the year at $1,471,500. And this was actually a 7.1% increase over last year. However, the other number in comparison that I want to point out is where we are at since peak pricing, which was about March of 2022. So since that time, we're actually still 16.9% below that peak price and exactly $300,000 less. Next up, we've got townhomes and they finished the year at a benchmark price of $826,400. And this is up 5.3% from last year. Now in comparison to the peak prices, which was about a month after detached homes for both townhomes and condos. So sometime around April of 2022, prices are still down 11.1% which is equivalent to about $102,700. And as I mentioned before, when we see the compression and the expansion of the market, that's why we see these differences in percentages. And this again will become even more clear when we get to the condos. And so now moving on to condos, they ended the year at $537,600. And this was 6.9% higher than the previous year. Now in comparison to peak prices, they are only down 8.2% or $48,100. So you can see that both on a percentage basis and an absolute basis, detached homes are still the most significantly below peak prices, whereas condos are the closest. Now, a couple of points that I do wanna make here is that the majority of this video is gonna be focused on the year over year change. However, when we're looking at the month over month prices, they were actually down about 1.2 to 1.4% across all asset classes. But once again, this is typical for December, so so nothing really surprising here. And we did see a slight downtrend for the past couple of months through October, November, and December across most property types and across most cities. But once again, pretty standard as we head into the holiday season. Now there's several different arguments and reasons for why everything happened the way it did this year, but obviously one of the biggest ones was the high interest rates. So because of its effect both on purchasing power and people not wanting to break their mortgages and other reasons, this kept both sales and listings in the Fraser Valley low in 2023. But at the same time, it also held the year-over-year -year price growth to single digits. 
Now moving on, I'm gonna to quickly touch on the price changes across asset classes in the main markets that I serve. So the different parts of Surrey, Langley, and White Rock. And once we're done that, I'm going to point out where the biggest gainers were. So stick around for that. So if you're not familiar with how the Fraser Valley breaks their statistics down for the different parts of Surrey, they break it into four different areas. So you've got North Surrey, Surrey Central, Cloverdale, and South Surrey slash White Rock. And for the purposes of this video, we're just gonna keep South Surrey and White Rock together. And then of course, we also have Langley, which we'll get to as well. So first of all, we've got Cloverdale, and for detached homes, prices ended the year at $1.461 million, which was up from $1.348 three million dollars the previous year and so this was an 8.4 percent increase and one of the reasons for this larger increase is the fact that cloverdale got clobbered when prices were coming down so it was a nice little rebound for them moving on to townhouses they ended the year at eight hundred forty three thousand nine hundred dollars which was up from seven hundred eighty nine thousand the previous year and this was a seven percent increase and then lastly condos ended the year at five hundred sixty four thousand five hundred dollars up from $517,400, which was a 9.1% increase from the previous year. Moving on, we've got Central Surrey, and just for your information, Central Surrey is essentially Fleetwood and the surrounding areas. It's not Wally, that is actually gonna be North Surrey. So detached homes in the area ended the year at $1.5098 million. This is up from $1.4167 million the previous year, which is a total of 6.6%. Townhomes ended the year at $823,800, up from $785,100. And this was a 4.9% increase from the previous year. And apartments finished at $553,700, which was up from $513,900, a total of a 7.7% increase. Moving on to North Surrey, which is Wally, Surrey Central, Bridgeview, Fraser Heights, and the other neighborhoods in that area. Detached homes finished the year at $1.4. $487 million, up from $1.3569 million the previous year for a total of an increase of 6.8%. Townhomes finished the year at $738,200, up from $710,000, an increase of 4%. And condos ended the year at $482,700, up from $459,800, a 5% increase. Next on our list, we're heading over to the South Surrey and White Rock area, and for detached homes, they ended the year at $1.906 million, up from $1.823 million, a 4.6% increase. Townhomes finished at $953,600, up from $902,900, a 5.6% increase. And as for apartments, they ended at $627,500, up from $574,500, an increase of 9.2%. And lastly, moving on to land Langley, detached homes finished the year at $1.6065 million, up from $1,484,800, an increase of 8.2%. Townhomes ended at $854,500, which was up from $809,500, an increase of 5.6%. And apartments ended at $596,400, up from $567,100, an increase of 5.2%. So the winners for the biggest gainers for each property type in the areas covered were as follows. For detached homes, it was Cloverdale at an 8.4% increase. Cloverdale also took townhomes at a 7% increase. And then the South Surrey White Rock area narrowly edged out Cloverdale for condos as they had 9.2% and Cloverdale only had 9.1%. And once again, I just wanna reinforce that I definitely wouldn't have thought that we were going to see a price increase to this extent even though going back 40 years the average price change is around seven percent annually but i was definitely a little more bearish especially with the significant number of interest rate hikes which were finally starting to take effect but now it's sounding like we're likely going to have the first interest rate decreases sometime in the middle of this year but who really knows that's just what's being said right now things honestly change on a day-to-day -day basis but what i can tell you is there has definitely been an increase in the market activity over the past two weeks of December and the first week of January. Now don't get me wrong, I'm not saying that we're seeing this massive number of sales and prices are increasing or anything like that, but it's more so 
an increase in the level of competition and there's just more people out and more people writing offers. And I think there's a couple of reasons for this. One of the main ones being that the US Fed held their interest rates and came up with a statement that they were projected to decrease rates by 75 basis points next year. And the funny thing is that the Canadian market seemed to be more impacted by what's going on in the States than what's going on with the Bank of Canada. Because after they made that announcement, bond yields actually fell pretty significantly, which if you know are tied to fixed rates. Now fixed rates haven't completely followed them and are typically delayed because the banks want to see the bond yield stay at a suppressed level for some sort of an extended period of time before they follow suit. But this definitely helped play a role in stirring up some more activity in the market. And the second reason being that the Bank of Canada held their rates, which is showing more stability in this market and is increasing consumer confidence. And market sentiment plays such a huge role here in the Fraser Valley real estate market, as well as the greater Vancouver real estate market. So when that starts to pick up, it does so pretty quickly. So what are we gonna see for the rest of this month? Well, I don't think we're gonna see anything substantial in either direction. As I mentioned, I think it's gonna be a lot more competitive out there and it's gonna be tougher to buy a home than it would have been in November or December, but I wouldn't expect any sort of major fluctuations in price. However, it's definitely starting to feel like we're gonna have an early spring market this year. But at the end of the day, it's really gonna depend on your location and the type of product you have. Because what a lot of people tend to not understand or overlook is the fact that it's not always the best time to sell your home when prices are at peak pricing. You have to take a holistic look at what you're selling and what you're buying. For instance, if you bought two years ago or more and you're looking to upsize, right now is probably one of the best opportunities you're gonna get to be able to make that jump into the bigger home. The reason being is that your home's price is almost guaranteed to be higher than it was when you bought it and you've gained a ton of equity. However, because prices are down right now and it's a little bit of a slower market, it's actually the best time to buy. Because as I mentioned before, the larger the property type and more expensive it is, the more it compresses in a down market, which means it shrinks the gap between the lower property type. But as I already mentioned, it's really gonna depend on your unique situation, the product you have to sell, and so many other factors that are going on in your life financially and otherwise. So if you do want to continue this conversation and just see if it does look like a good time to make a move, whether you're a first time buyer, an upsizer or otherwise, you can scroll down and click the first link in the description to book a call with me at a time that works best for you. If you're interested in seeing what my predictions are for the 2024 real estate market, I'll have a video link right here. And before you get out of here, I'd love to hear what you have to say. What do you think is gonna happen this year? Leave a comment down below. Thanks so much for watching. Once again, Happy New Year and we'll see you in the next video.